Minn Kota Endura C2 with 30 pounds of thrust. Chin's 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. Let's put these two together and answer all the important questions. How fast, how far, how much? Hey everybody, AJ here and welcome back to the Eagle Ray channel where we do all things DIY electric boats. Marine motors, batteries, solar panels, you name it, if it's got volts and it's on a boat, you're in the right place. Today we are finally digging into the propulsion system for the first time. We've spent the past month just trying to build the Yaktoon project and now we need to figure out how to make it move. So I bought the cheapest motor that I could find on Amazon, the Minn Kota Endura C2, and we're going to see what it can do. The Minn Kota Endura C2 with 30 pounds of thrust. It's hard to convert 30 pounds of thrust into an accurate horsepower number, but it would be something in the realm of 0.3 horsepower. I paid $109 on a Black Friday sale, and that actually beat the price of anything even from AliExpress, which is pretty cool. I had a handful of questions when this motor showed up, including number one, how fast is it gonna be able to push the Yaktoon? Number two, what kind of range can we expect? And number three, what's the difference between performance at low throttle versus full throttle? We're gonna answer all of those questions right here on the test bench, and we're gonna take it out to the lake, but it's important to know that those answers don't just come from the motor that you choose, but from the battery as well. So our power source for today is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from a company called Chins. Now Chins is just like any other Chinese bargain brand that you find on Amazon, except there are certain bargain brands that are known for having high quality internals for the price. Chins is definitely one of those. I paid 400 bucks for it last year, but if I had waited until Black Friday, I could have got it for 300. And right now it's past the holidays, so it's back up at 319. And you've probably heard that lithium batteries have been on a cost decline for several years now, and that is definitely true for chins over the past couple of years. Now that said, I did buy the cheapest version of this battery, so it doesn't come with any fancy extras like Bluetooth monitoring, low temp protection, or the biggest difference between this one and the ones that you usually find on Amazon for three or even four times as much, the warranty. There is no warranty on this battery, and honestly, I am perfectly okay with that because you know what? If I had to pay triple for this battery just for the privilege of a warranty, it means that if I bought the cheap one instead for a third of the price, well, if anything goes wrong with that one a little bit early, I can just buy another one. I've got two thirds of that price that I saved that I could still spend that money on. I could buy three of these for the same price before the warranty becomes useful. So at that big a price for the warranty, it's just not worth it in my opinion. And warranties on lithium often cost more than the battery itself, sometimes a lot more. My personal feeling on this is no thank you. I will buy the cheap one and if I need to, I'll replace it. I think my chances are quite high that I can pay less over time if I just be the cheapskate I was born to be. Enough talk about pricing. It's time to see what this motor and that battery can do together. Are you ready? It's time to send it. Well, okay, by send it, I mean we're gonna send some water swirling around a fish tank. But not to worry, we'll get out to the lake before too long. But check out what we've installed on top of the battery. I've connected a little monitor from a company named Drock. This is a Chinese company with decent customer service. I've had some trouble with their equipment before, but they're very responsive, although the language barrier can be a bit challenging. These little LCD monitors are dirt cheap though. I paid, I think, 20 bucks for this on Amazon. The wiring diagram is written right on the back, so it's really easy to hook up. Voltage is electrical pressure. It's like pressure in a fire hose. As you spray electricity out of the battery, the pressure eases off gradually until it's so low that you can't keep spraying. The top right is amps. Amperage is a measure of the amount of stuff that's coming out of the battery at a given moment. If it were a fire hose, you could pause and slice through the hose and you'd be able to count how many molecules of water are visible in that slice. And if it's an electrical wire, that cross section will have a certain number of amps. Thicker fire hose, more current. Thicker wire, more current. That's why we call amps current. And watts are on the bottom left of the screen. Watts are just the top two numbers combined into one. If you had a hose that has high pressure but low current, you'd have a pretty wimpy fire hose. 
If you had a hose that has high current but low pressure, you'd again have a pretty wimpy fire hose. Pressure and current have to work together to create power. So we combine both by multiplying them. Pressure times current equals power. Volts times amps equals watts. Watts are power. Is it a wimpy motor or a powerful motor? The watts can tell you that. The volts are not enough information by themselves. Neither are the amps. You need both of those put together to create watts to give you the full picture. What about this number on the far right though? That is watt hours. Not to be confused with watts and not to be confused with amp hours. Are you confused yet? Okay, we're gonna do a whole video on this topic, so you don't have to worry about this too much right now, but just know for now that amp hours, which are usually written on the case, are different from watt hours, but they are two different ways to measure the same thing. What we're measuring with both of these is the fuel tank size. So back on the test bench, that's exactly what the drop screen is giving us in the lower right-hand corner. All three of the other numbers remain pretty steady, and you'll see them slightly decline over time, but this fourth number is constantly ticking upward, and that's because it's counting how much fuel is in your battery as it exits. Using this number, you can actually determine whether or not the battery has as much as it claims to have in the fuel tank. So right now we're gonna ignore the amp hours and we're gonna use watt hours instead because the watt hours is what we have on the drop monitor. And so in order to find the watt hours, all we have to do is multiply this number by this number. 12.8 times 100 is 1280 watt hours. If we see less than 1280 watts, then chins lied to us. If we see more than 1280, then they over deliver. I like it when companies over deliver. So you can use this technique to figure out whether you got what you paid for. All you gotta do is have one of these little drop monitors running during a single discharge and you can see exactly whether or not you got what it says on the box. Let's fast forward to the end and see how chins actually treated us. The test is finished, the battery is dead and we have a total watt hour number 1345. Is that good or bad? We were promised 1280 watt hours or 1.28 kilowatt hours and we actually got out of this battery 1345 watt hours or 1.345 kilowatt hours. That's a positive difference of approximately 5%. So good on you chins, you've over delivered on the capacity. Let's run one more test before we take this setup out to the lake. I wanna see what this battery can do when the Endura is at its lowest throttle setting. So now we're gonna jump into super duper time-lapse mode because low throttle on a tiny Endura plus a 100 amp hour battery means we're gonna run for almost 100 hours to complete this test and that is no exaggeration. You could be out on the lake all week with this. I think I took six days total to shoot this test. I don't think we're gonna have time to do a complete discharge when we have a small motor and a big battery and we're running at low throttle because it just takes so many days to shoot it that I won't have time for anything else for an upcoming video. But I did completely discharge the battery for this test and here's what we ended up with. The total energy is a very similar number of watt hours to the full throttle test. The fuel tank size is the fuel tank size whether you pull at a trickle or you try and draw all the amps at once. Now the total range is gonna be very similar as a result as well. When you go at full throttle, you're gonna get a certain distance. If you go at low throttle instead, you're gonna get that exact same distance or thereabouts. It's just gonna take you a lot longer at low throttle. Now the low throttle and full throttle should both have the same range in a perfect world, but the real world is far from perfect. So no more theory, it is time to send it for real. We're gonna see exactly how far a battery like this can take us. With this motor, you basically have to be at full throttle the whole time with only moderate wind and current. And even then, it won't be near enough to move even a small eight-foot boat like the Yak Tune. The Endura is good for kayak-sized boats, but not much more. So my original plan was to launch from the popular Site 6 launch ramp, circle around the island, and go under the London Bridge. But I never quite made it there. As I was passing a popular waterfront restaurant called the Turtle Grill, I hit some really high current and wind and the Enduro was no match for it. I tried to steer into it hard to starboard, as hard as it could go, and it still wouldn't turn into the wind. So I finally conceded and agreed the wind wanted me to go back the other way, 
I had to go back the other way. In case you're wondering, yes, the London Bridge is right here in Lake Havasu, Arizona. I drive over it every time I launch the Yaktoon. It's a fun tourist stop. But let's get back at it. I actually had the Drock monitor fail on me right about here because, well, I was kind of lazy when I set it up, honestly. See these four terminals here? I put bare stranded wire in there and that's not the right way to do it. You're supposed to crimp ferrule connectors onto your wire and put those in instead. Ferrules will hold much better under motor vibration, so I've ordered some of those. But we need to finish depleting this battery to zero and I actually had to come back two more days in a row to kill this battery. On day two, the drock actually disconnected before I even cast off. So I spent about a half hour with no monitor, but no problem though. Every second the monitor was failing, I used GPS to calculate distance and factored in the approximate watt hours so that we could calculate the correct number at the end. And on day three, I was finally able to run this battery till it was empty. This time I chose to run in a small figure eight pattern where the wind wasn't too bad. You'll see me paddling occasionally, but that's just to steer, not to help the motor. And finally, we have our results. The average amp draw from this motor at full throttle is about 24 amps, which equates to about 300 watts of power. Knowing that, we can actually guesstimate the range and runtime because we know the battery has 1345 watt hours. So we just divide that by the 300 watt draw and we get an estimate of four and a half hours of runtime. So what did we do on the lake? We did a little bit more than that, four hours and 42 minutes, but the average speed was only 1.35 miles per hour. So would I buy this motor? If I'm gonna run it on a pond, definitely. If I'm gonna run it on a big lake like Havasu, I would absolutely upgrade to higher power. But if you just wanna sit power slowly and have a motor that will last for days before you need a recharge, the Endura is a good pick. As for the chins, I am really happy with the results. We got 1.34 kilowatt hours on the test bench, which is about 105 amp hours, 5% better than what it says on the box. And then out on the lake, we did almost as well. We got 1.32 kilowatt hours, which is about 103 amp hours, about 3% better than what it says on the box. Now lithium iron phosphate though, is designed to be able to handle way more current than the Enduro was ever able to pull because at 1C, which is the standard rate for LifePo 4, you should be able to pull up to 100 amps continuous out of this battery. And we were only ever pulling a third of that with the Endura. So we're gonna throw higher loads at this battery in the future. As you know, I had to learn how to weld in order to build the Yaktoon. It's attached to the kayaks with aluminum brackets and I had to weld those myself. I'm not that good at it, but I've been practicing for a couple months now and I'm starting to feel a little bit more confident Got a whole video of what it was like from very beginning, the first weld that I put on metal, all the way to where I am now. That's coming next week. So like, subscribe, and join us for the live stream at 2 p.m. on Sunday because I am still giving away this Milwaukee angle grinder as soon as we reach 1,000 subscribers. Rules are in the description. And don't forget, as you go about your daily life, set aside some time to get out on the water and enjoy yourself. Until then, boat safe. Take care.